are with us uh, tonight. Welcome. Hallelujah. Uh, Christina uh, from, uh, from Texas. This is, a, this is a great leadership group. And I know that you have uh, supernatural experiences uh, with the Lord. And so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Let him share with us what is on his heart. Uh, again, uh, thank you for being with us. The title of the message tonight is Supernatural Ministry. What, by, what I mean by supernatural ministry is high energy manifestations of the Holy Spirit through signs and wonders. Uh, and that are a lot in a lot of different areas, including uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, healings, miracles, uh, casting out demons. Uh, it's, it's what God says is important. In uh, Galatians 5, uh, verse 6, um, says that what matters is faith that is energized by love. Mm, amen. What matters, the New International Version said, the only thing that matters is faith that is energized uh, that works by love, but that expresses itself through love. And the voice says, what matters is mm -hmm. uh, faith energized by love. And so tonight we're talking about high energy manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And, and that's what I'm talking about tonight, that uh, the Holy Spirit operates through vessels such as you mm -hmm. uh, to bring a deliverance, a healing, miracles uh, to other people. And we're going to uh, share some of our experiences, and we also want to hear from you. And uh, we're going to be talking uh, about Paul, uh, looking at the mm -hmm. Apostle Paul. Uh, you know, he said in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, uh, be imitators of me as I imitate Christ. And, and that's, that's what it's about. It's about imitating Christ. Amen. The, a good reason to look at Paul is that he writes down a lot about his motivation. What was, what motivated Paul? And so motivation is a part of what we're going to be dealing with tonight. We're going to look at some of the supernatural things that uh, Paul did. Uh, and we see through the book of Acts, many of them, and I'll just uh, mention a few of them. Uh, but you see that uh, things happen. When Paul uh, went someplace, things happen. Uh, one of the things I want to start with is in Acts 16. Uh, and, and that was when uh, he and uh, Barnabas were walking along and there was this woman that uh, was used in fortune telling, mm -hmm. and she made a lot of money for her um, her owners. Uh, she was a slave woman uh, by fortune telling, but it was a spirit of divination, and uh, she was saying, "Well, these are bond servants of the Most High God," and and Paul got annoyed with her, so he turned around and cast the demon out. Hallelujah. Cast the, uh, spirit of divination out of her. Now, uh, he didn't do a lot of counseling and say, oh, you've got to go fill yourself up and um, our seven worst demons will come to you. I mean, he just cast it out. And it left that very moment. The moment he told it to come out, it came out. So that's the first uh, example I want to look at, Paul. Mm. A high energy. Uh, it's not uh, just beating around the bush. It's speaking things into the spirit and causing things to happen. It's a high energy outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we're talking about. Now, the second one that I want to mention is Acts 19, uh, verses 11 and 12. It said, God wrought special miracles extraordinary mm. miracles I, not just every day ordinary miracles i'm talking about special mm. miracles extraordinary miracles by the hands of paul uh, so that sicknesses and diseases uh, were driven out and evil yeah. spirits left 
Now, this is not healing. This is not healing as we think of healing, uh, where uh, a person gets healed over a period of time and then they're a process. I mean, it just happened. Uh, the Spirit of God was driving out sicknesses and diseases uh, through the hands of Paul as he uh, was holding handkerchiefs and then the, those cloths were carried to people, placed on bodies of sick people, and, and the sicknesses left. They couldn't stay there. There was so much anointing, wow. so Hallelujah. much Hallelujah. presence of the Holy Spirit. The disease couldn't stay there. It left. It's not like so, oh, healing over two or three weeks. No, it the disease is left and the evil spirits went out of them. And Paul wasn't even there. He didn't even uh, pray over those people. He just simply uh, sent these cloths uh, to the people. And when the cloth was laid on a sick person, they were healed. Hallelujah. That's, that's Hallelujah. A, manifestation of high energy yes. outpouring Supernatural. Of, the of the Holy Spirit. So how do we learn the ministry? Well, it's by recognizing the presence of the Holy Spirit That's right. Amen. and cooperating with the Holy Spirit. What is it that you want to do uh, today? What is it that you want to do through our lives? So that's what I'm talking about today, high energy. And let's think about another example on uh, Paul in Acts 20. Uh, he was preaching and, and sometimes he got uh, a little long-winded and he preached uh, up all the way to midnight. I, I tried to cut it off before that, but <laughs> at midnight uh, there was a young man uh, that fell out of a third story <laughs> window because he got sleepy and he went to sleep. Third story window, he fell and he was dead. People said he's dead. Uh, but Paul was, didn't satisfy, that didn't satisfy Paul. Paul. <laughs> he went down there and fell on his body. Hallelujah! And, and raised him up. Amen! I'm talking about supernatural ministry. I'm not talking about, oh, let's, let's all get around this uh, person and, and let's all pray and see if God will do something. No, Paul fell on him and raised him up. Hallelujah. And took him back upstairs to the third floor. And I guess they continued on with his message. He, he, was, he wasn't finished, <laughs> he was finished with the ministry, with the message. He wasn't finished. <laughs> Glory to God. I want to talk about Paul's motivation. What, what motivated uh, Paul? Mm -hmm. And uh, I like what he said in 1 Corinthians uh, 2 verse 4. He said, I don't come to you mm -hmm. with enticing words of men's wisdom or persuasive words of men's wisdom, but I come to you in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit oh, and yeah. power. power. See, this is a part of his motivation. I, I, I didn't just come here to see whether or not something might happen. He said, I have come to you in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and of power. So his messages and his preaching were with the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and with power. I, I like uh, another thing that, that he said, which, which I thought was really important. And, and, and then he said, I had rather die. Oh, hey, and do you have this kind of a, a motivation? And, and what is your thinking and what is your attitude? He said, I had rather die than for anyone to think about my ministry with a wrong attitude. I, I don't want anybody. Mm. Let no man. I'd rather die than let any man think that I was preaching for the money, for the sake mm -hmm. of the money. Amen. Don't get Amen. the wrong attitude. Don't Hallelujah. have the wrong opinion about why I preach, he said. Have you gotten to the point where you're willing to die rather than have people uh, malign the gospel. And see, Paul stood in defense of the gospel. And it, it sometimes he says, my gospel. He, it was such a revelation to him and he, he shared it. He, he took ownership of it. You have that kind of ownership of the gospel and that you're not going to let people, you're going to stand against them and you'd rather die 
than let them run over your gospel and trample it into the ground? Or have you made that kind of a decision? Are you motivated that you had rather die? See, this, this really sets me on fire when I think mm. about Paul's Amen. motivation, Amen. that he'd rather die. And he doesn't just come with enticing words or persuasive words, but he comes with the real thing, the demonstration. And this is what I call supernatural, supernatural ministry with signs and wonders and healings and miracles. That's the way, that's the way he came. And so we're looking at his attitude and, and his motivation. Uh, I think about in Philippians 1, he said, it's very much better that I go on to be with Christ. Very much better that I go on to be with Christ, but it's more necessary yes, that I stay here with that, you. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. Let me say that again. Mm -hmm. I think it's incredible. He, he, he's, he's considering, well, should I just go on to be with Christ? Or, or do I need to stay here and keep and and teach uh, teach people a little bit more? What what do I need to do? And and he said it's very much better for me, <laughs> very much better for me that I go on with Christ. But it's more necessary Siri. for you that I stay because where I am, Christ is going to come forth. I'm, it's Christ in me. Hallelujah. It, it's not. Paul living, but it's, he knew, and if you come to this decision, and, and it, do you have this attitude, it's not you, but it's Christ in you, and that's, Hallelujah. Release, Hallelujah. And that's why he's going to impact people, why he is going to impact people, because he's made these decisions, this is the motivation, I, I just wanted to share this motivation with you. And, and these are some things that we don't see about Jesus as he's doing his miracles because most of what's written about Jesus is written by Matthew and Mark and Luke and John. Uh, but see, in Paul's writing, he wrote and told us what his motivation was, why he did the things that he did. Mm -hmm. uh, he wanted Christ to come forth and, and he was there uh, teaching the people for Christ to come forth in them. Now, Paul wrote something in Colossians 1, verses 28 and 29, that this is what I relate to. This is the, uh, these are the two verses and the goal for my ministry. This is mm. what the Lord has revealed to me about my ministry. Uh, Paul wrote uh, that it's his goal to present every person Blame. perfect, perfect. And mature Amen. in Christ. But we don't stop there because that was verse 28, but 29 says, and, and I do that by the working or by the energy mm -hmm. that's within me. Mm -hmm. So these, this is my goal. This is Fred White's goal to present every person mature. And I do that in Christ Jesus and I do that by the energy that's at work in me. That, that's that word working uh, in some translations say working, but if you look at it in the Greek, it's energy. It's, it's the same word we get energy from. So uh, that's the energy of the Holy Spirit. Remember, where did we start uh, tonight? And the core verse is what matters is faith that is energized by I love. love. Now, you look at how faith and love and the Holy Spirit all work together. See, Romans 5, 5 says that the Holy Spirit has poured love into our heart, the love of God. It comes from the Holy Spirit. And now here in, Gal in Galatians 5, 6, it says it's the love that energizes the faith. Mm -hmm. So th they're all closely related. And Jude uh chapter verses 20 and 21 of course says that build yourself up on your most, most holy faith, faith by praying in, in the, the holy, holy ghost Spirit. amen glory to god and keep yourself in the love of god so all three of those things work together faith and love and the holy spirit amen the holy amen. spirit pours love into us and that love energizes us so it's really the energy of the Holy Spirit operating through love mm -hmm. that uh, makes our faith work. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and, and that's the reason I relate to, to Paul, because this is what the Holy Spirit said to me, that uh, I'm going to mature people. That's what he wants me to do, to mature people, bring people into maturity. Uh, and, and I don't do it with uh, books and, and uh, pamphlets and uh, they, those things. I do it by the energy of God that is within me. I release that. Faith is energized by love. And so yeah. I've got to have those three components, the Holy Spirit. That's the person of the Holy Spirit. He pours love into my heart and, and then uh, energizes that love, energizes the faith. Now, see, when I, when I was young, uh, I thought because I went to uh, church congregations and uh, they talked about love and I, I thought I loved people. Uh, but what I found out later was I love people who look like me yeah. and thought like me and, and uh, believed like me and dressed like and me. Dressed like me. But then uh, when we began ministering out and ministering to children and ministering to uh, older people and nursing homes and uh, prisoners and jails and prisons and people in drug rehab. When we minister to all those people, then I I found out that the Holy Spirit poured more love. Hallelujah. <laughs> see, Hallelujah. See, it's one thing we have our little group and we love them. That's yes, pretty easy. Yes. You love people that are like you, uh, but it's a little harder. Uh, it's more challenging to go out uh, of your inner circle and love some people out there because you'll run into some people that are not that loving. <laughs> and, and so love the people even outside of your inner circle. And, and that's God's love. So, see, uh, uh, a, a natural person can love people that uh, are like that person, mm -hmm. but, but it takes God's supernatural to love to love all people. And that's what we're called to do. So my motivation and my attitude is similar to uh, Paul's, what I've seen in the scriptures. But, but still, it's pretty hard to say, oh, I would rather die. <laughs> I'd rather die than to uh, let anybody talk uh, ill about my gospel, the message that I preach, uh, and come against that. I'd rather die. Can you imagine? He's, he's drawn a line. And uh, he's not going to back off of it. He had strong core values, and he was going to stand by them to the death. And then I, one other thing I want to say about Paul, uh, and, and that is, uh, he said in, in Philippians 3, uh, that I want to know Christ. Mm -hmm. I want to know Jesus Christ and the power, power of his resurrection, resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Now, can we honestly say those things? To know the power of sure, everybody, woo, we love the power. Uh, can we say we <laughs> love the power of uh, the resurrection amen, of Jesus Christ? Amen. But can we also uh, include in our statement and our attitude, that's what I'm talking about tonight, why was it? Why was it that Paul could create these uh, miracles that I've talked about and, and perform these miracles and that God would work through him? It's because of his attitude, because of his motivation, because of his faithfulness to the Lord, to lift up the Lord and the revelation that, uh, that the Lord had given him. And he could say that I want to know him because he's saying, uh, everything I have gained in this life, every, I, I just count it as rubbish. I count it as mm. all loss mm. uh, to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. So in just those few verses that I've covered tonight, I want you to know that to do high energy miracles, to do high energy supernatural ministry by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it's going to take the kind of attitude that Paul had. He said, be an imitator of me as I'm an imitator of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of attitude and motivation uh, that we need in order to perform uh, and, and operate successfully in supernatural ministry. Now, I wanted uh, Sherry to talk uh, and about some supernatural ministry that she's been involved in. And I also want to talk, I want her to talk to you about 
her motivation and her attitude. Why is it that she's able to do the kinds of things that uh, she has done? So I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Well, first of all, I would have to, to say that uh, the motivation that, that I've had uh, to go forth and do the will of the Lord uh, has been uh, the motivation uh, that the Holy Spirit was in charge and that the Holy Spirit was doing everything that was done, uh, that I was just being a vessel for him to uh, flow through and do whatever he wanted to do. Uh, the also the attitude of of where it says much is forgiven those that, that where much has been forgiven they love much and that's exactly where I come from that he forgave me of much and uh, of, of things that you would not even imagine that a nine-year-old child would be involved in and but he forgave me and when he did, not only was, was you know, that love uh, brought into my heart, but it also uh, was um, deliverance for me. Uh, so not only did he save me, but he delivered me at the same time of, of many uh, evil activities. And so my motivation is, is this is, I owe him a great debt. And it's not just a debt that he went to the cross because that, yes, absolutely, um, that, that he went to the cross. He died for me. He rose again for me. He bled for me. He was whipped on his back for me. Uh, he wore the crown of thorns for me. All of that is important, but it was that he cared enough for me to save me and deliver me from the things that were putting me in bondage. And so my, motive, my motivation is what can I do for him? What can I do for him? As long as I live on this earth, what can I do for him? And Jesus said, I can do nothing. I can do nothing of myself. And that, that's the same motivation that I have. I, I, I have nothing uh, that others would, uh, would want to uh, take for themselves. Uh, what they want to take is, is what they see of, of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and so that's because all the things that have been done that he has used me in this life for so far, I uh, have been from him and by the Holy Spirit. And so the motivation uh, that I have is that uh, I owe him everything and especially my love. And um, I just want to, to, to give just a few of the things that, you know, the, that come to, to my heart, uh, come up in me uh, right now that, that were supernatural, that, I knew that, that the Holy Spirit was there, that he was working and that he was pouring out his spirit on the people. Why? Because he loves the people. You know, Brother Fred gave the, the testimony about his being chosen as department head uh, in agricultural economics when he didn't even want that position, but God wanted him in that position. And wherever God wants you, that's where he will put you if you release to him, if you yield to him, if you say, Lord, you know, here I am, just use me any way you want to, uh, use me in healing, use me in salvation, use me uh, with the children, use me with the, with the older people, what, whatever God wants to use you. Uh, it's just a, a free vessel. And I know that Catherine Kuhlman said that. Uh, she said, all you have to do is be a yielded vessel. Be a yielded vessel for the Lord and expect him uh, to use you in the supernatural. Hallelujah. And so one, one experience that, that I had was in Mexico. And, uh, and I may have shared this with the group before, uh, but a woman came to me after one of the sessions and she said, I have uh, lumps all over my, my body. 
and uh, masses all over my body. And, and she said, will you pray for me? And I said, I certainly will. I said, but can I have some time to seek the Lord about this? And so it was at a break. And so I went into a back room and I just went before the Lord and I said, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to pray for this woman? And what the Holy Spirit said to me was, uh, beat her in the chest three times. And on the third time, all of the lumps will disappear. Well, that was pretty challenging. You know, when you walk in the supernatural ministry, you cannot be uh, wishy-washy. You cannot be a, a wimp. You know, you, you, you will be asked to do challenging things, things that do not make sense to the natural mind. And, and, you know, that was very challenging for me. And so after the break, I went back out and I called her up and I said, this is what uh, the Holy Spirit has said, that I am to hit you in the chest three times. And on the third time, all of the lumps will disappear. And I said, are you willing to allow me to do this? And she said, yes. And so, bam, bam, bam. And it wasn't just a little tap either. It was, it was, it was hard. And, uh, and I know that the Holy Spirit had a hold of my arm at the time that I was doing this. And so she fell on the ground and I thought she was dead. Uh, she didn't get up for a long, long time. And we went on with the ministry. And finally she got up, she went to her seat and she sat down for a few moments. And then I see, I, I see her get up and go to the back. And I'm thinking, well, what is she doing back there? Well, then she came back out. And in a little while, we asked her to give testimony. And she said that she went to the bathroom and she threw up and the blood came out and she felt of herself. And there were no lumps anywhere in her body. The, the Lord did that. That was a supernatural move of the Holy Spirit. And, and what did I do? I was, just the, I was just there. I was the vessel. I was willing uh, to do what he said to do. And some of you, he's asking you to do certain things. You have to be very strong and very courageous and be willing uh, to, uh, to do what, what God told you to do. Hallelujah. Now, the people that um, the Lord has raised from the dead through me, um, different, different scenarios, uh, but the one that, um, uh, there's two of them that are very prominent in my, still in my thinking, and the first one was my son, Travis, who drowned uh, here in Athens, Georgia at the swimming pool, and I mean, you're holding your baby right there, and um, you know, to see your child come up out of the water, blue, not breathing. Um, and, you know, all I could do was pull him to me. And all I knew to do was to begin to pray in the spirit. And I began to sing to the Lord. I began to praise him. Sister Becky knows how powerful praise is, how powerful worship is. And I began to pray and praise the Lord. And, and they, I could hear the sirens because they had called the paramedics uh, to come. And all of a sudden, I felt a movement in his little feet. He was blue. He had turned blue. He was not breathing. He was dead. And, and the blood, the, the movement of the feet, uh, his little toes were moving. And then it moved up his legs. And then it moved up his body. And he started spitting out water, started spitting out water. And the paramedic said, well, we're here. I said, well, Jesus has already done the job. He's already done it. Hallelujah. I'm talking about supernatural experiences with the Lord and he will do it through you. He's no respecter of persons. He will do it through you if you expect it, if you ask him to do it. Hallelujah. I know Sister Becky, uh, the Lord sends her where there's been accidents and she, and she goes there and she prays and she believes the Lord for recovery and restoration and life. Don't you, Sister Becky? Hallelujah. 
Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. What about raising somebody else from the dead? Okay. Well, the the second experience uh, was um, uh, here in Athens, Georgia, in the ICU uh, unit. Uh, the the family called me in, uh, and they were about to take the man off of all of the equipment because they said he's dead. All of his organs are black in his body. He is dead. You need to release him. You need to let him go. And so they called me in. There were three people that I put out of the room uh, that were not in faith. They were speaking uh, evil uh, comments and I sent them out. And the, the left in the room was, was his wife and two other women. And we began, so we're gonna begin by praising the Lord. We're going to, again, we're going to praise the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to have the presence of God come into this room. Now, there were two ICU doctors watching and a nurse that was watching at the same time. And uh, they, they had called the family in. They had called the family in because it was, it was over with. It was over with. And, um, and so we began to praise the Lord and sing praises to him and the presence of the Lord came in. Now, this is very important. Listen to what I'm saying to you. The timing of the Lord is extremely important. When it's time for you to speak, that's when you speak. Otherwise, keep your mouth shut. But it's very important, the timing of the Lord. And so we praised and praised and worshiped the Lord and and uh, one of the doctors came in and said, well, you know, it's time to take him off. And I said, no, it's not time to take him off. And then just a few moments later, the Lord says, it's time to call him. And he, he had told me on the way to call him three times by his name. And then on the third time that he would raise him up. And uh, so on the third time, I called him three times. Mark, come forth. Mark, come forth. Mark, come forth. And on the third time, he sat up on the bed. He took his wife's hand and, and he said, I'm hungry. I want something to eat. And the doctors came rushing in and the nurse came in and said, what's going on here? And I said, well, God just raised him up. God just raised him up. And that man was not saved. Why does God do for certain things? Why does he send one of you to raise up the dead or pray for someone that's sick? This man was not, he was, he was, he was dying and going to hell because he was not saved. Right then, right there, we led him to the to Jesus and he became born again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, several years later, he went on to be with the Lord, but he went. As a believer, he went as a Christian. Woo, hallelujah. So God does supernatural things so that people can be saved, that people can be delivered. Hallelujah. Did you have something? Jenny, about you. Jenny or Jenny, Jenny casting out the demon out of her down at Washington. Oh, okay. There was a woman that they call me. The family called me in. Uh, that this woman was had not eaten in four days and she was dying. She was shriveling up and she uh, had not opened her eyes for four days. The doctor said that he thought that she was in a comatose uh, situation and that she was uh, passing away. And so they called me in and I went and I went into the bedroom and, and I went in by myself and uh, all of a sudden, and there she was, she was, there was no movement, there was no um, eye movement, there was no body movement, um, and all of a sudden, I felt this tapping on my shoulder, and I turned around, and it was an evil spirit. Now, this was not a animal, it was not a lizard, it was not a, you know, any type of but it was a, it was a, it was a man and it was an evil spirit. I knew it was an evil spirit. And he said, you have to go because I've come to kill her. And I said, no, you've got to go 
in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and and he left. He left. I thought it was the her husband that had come back into the room and and but no, it was an evil spirit. So you may encounter you may encounter evil spirits that do not want you to help someone. That do not want you to pray for the sick. That do not want you to raise the dead. But the Lord has all the power. It's all about, about the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Tell them about yeah. increased uh, senses. All five of your senses uh, being increased in the supernatural okay. realm. Uh, in the supernatural realm, you will find out that all five of your natural senses will increase. Mm -hmm. Your hearing will increase. Your smell will increase. Your your seeing will increase. Uh, your all of your five senses. Your tasting. I smell cancer. There are certain cancers that have a smell, a very strong um, smell, like a cesspool. I can smell that. And so, when you believe the Lord for a supernatural experience. Expect that your your five senses will also be intensified. <coughs> that helps you do what God wants you to do. He enables you to do what you do. We cannot do anything on our own. Remember, I started with that. Jesus said, I can do nothing uh, on my own. What can you see now in the supernatural realm? Right now in the supernatural no, realm. In general, that he shows you. Oh, okay. Well, two years ago, he increased my sight uh, by showing me the inside of people's bodies. It's like an x-ray machine. Uh, I can see their skeletons. I can see their internal organs. Uh, I can see um, <coughs> um, it's like an x-ray. That, that's the best way that I can uh, describe it. <coughs> I can see uh, their spinal area, uh, their muscles, their muscle system. I can see what their bloodstream is doing. I told a young man uh, last week, uh, I told his parents that what I saw was that his, his, the cells in his body were dehydrated. And uh, that's why he was having difficulties and he was having bad headaches and what i saw was a dehydration in his cells even though he drank a lot of water even though he drank a lot of water did you know that not just drinking water will restore uh the the hydration in your cells you need to put back in the minerals and the 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 other uh things that are important uh for your cells to be healthy well his parents took him to a doctor and that's exactly what he said. Your, his cells are dehydrated. And he was hundreds of miles from here, but yet Sherry knew what was going on with him, as she does with lots of people. She knows what's going on with the people connected with us, even though they may be hundreds of miles away. This happens all the time. 